We got a question? Yeah, we do. We do. We got we, we got one from Chris. Okay. Um, he writes in. He goes, I want to take money out of my IRA 401k to buy a home. I'm retired in 72 and a half. Um, what would I have to pay based on my income is only Social Security. I have about $300,000 in the 401k. All right. So I'm really glad that Chris wrote in. Um, cause he wants to purchase a, a house and he's like, Hey, I got 300 grand in the old 401k. Yeah. How much can I get out? What's it going to cost? I'm 72 and a half. I don't know why he's sharing the half. Well, <laughs> it happens to be the RMD age, which is not irrelevant. Is it 72 answer. and a half or is it 72? It well, used to be 70 oh yeah, and a half. It's right. a combination. See, it used to even, be 70 and a half. So even, he's thinking of both. Even threw me off. All right. I mean, who, the, the whole IRS is stupid. With that, <laughs> that 59 and a half, 70 and a half. Well, I mean, yeah, and then they come up with these, these numbers, 19,974. It's like, why not just 20,000, right? Yeah. <laughs> come on. Um, yeah. So, all right. So, Chris, because you're over, the, and he's a, eligible for required minimum distributions. Yes. And so, I don't know if he's asking us if he gets special treatment because he's 72 and a half from a tax perspective. The answer is no. Um, also, people say, all right, well, I, my only income is Social Security. You know, my tax bracket, I, I, I pay very little in tax. Why don't I pull the money out of the retirement account? Because yeah. I'll pay very little in tax. Right. And But the tricky thing is when you have extra income, then your Social Security income suddenly becomes taxable. So that, that's what makes this tricky. Well, even, no, but the, what... He doesn't realize is that 100% of the money that he pulls out of the retirement account is going to be taxed as ordinary income. Correct. So it doesn't matter what tax bracket he's in. If he pulls $300,000 out, he's going to put himself in a high tax bracket. Correct. And he's going to take that money, Alan, and he's going to purchase a home. And then he's going to get a tax bill next April of a hundred thousand dollars yes i agree with that right yep and so what's chris gonna have to do to come up with a hundred grand well he's um he's got to go back to the ira 401k if there's anything but if there's nothing he's gonna have to borrow right so so <laughs> here we've seen this multiple multiple times and i i, I don't I'm, I'm not um poking the bear here i just want to educate chris that yeah. this could be one of the biggest mistakes that he ever makes in his life in regards to finance yeah is that let's assume that he takes $300,000 out and purchases a home. He's like, you know what? I'm retired. I have my Social Security income. I don't necessarily need this $300,000. i am renting. I want a, 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 you know, a place to call my own. Right. So he takes the three hundred grand out, buys a home, pays all cash. Right. Feels pretty good. Sure. No mortgage. No mortgage. Right? He's got a nice little place. Next April... He's going to get a tax bill because that $300,000 is all tax at ordinary income. And I don't know if um, Chris is single or married, but let's assume he's single. And at $300,000 of income, he's at the 35% tax bracket. So, you know, you could take 30% roughly of 300000 is ninety grand. So, and then depending on what state he lives in, he's going to have to pay state tax. So, let's just assume he pays $100,000 yeah. in tax. That's the tax bill that he has next year. But where's Chris going to come up with the cash to pay the hundred grand? Unless he has other resources. He, right? l let's say he blew his lob, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And so then he, he's like, what do I do now? Right. Well, then you have to borrow. Yeah, then you got to go and take a <laughs> loan. And your whole purpose of doing this was to be debt-free and have a nice house and everything else. Now you're going to have to get a loan of $100,000 to pay the IRS. But guess what? You don't have income. You have Social Security income. Are you going to qualify for the loan? You don't have any other assets because you took the assets out to purchase the house. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, that can be a big mistake. I want I'm going to answer the question a little bit different. I'm going to say I'm going to pretend he asked and maybe he did ask for the down payment. Like how much could he take out for a down payment? What would that be taxed at? And the answer to that question because you only have social security and assuming you're married, you could pull out $25,000 and pay no tax whatsoever because that's roughly the amount of the standard deduction. If you're single, it's half of that. If you pay, if you pull out any more than that, you're going to start running into where Social Security becomes partially taxable. So it's, it, it's a little bit tricky. You could pull out roughly, 
hundred, if you're married, roughly a hundred thousand and, and keep in the lowest bracket. Not quite because more of your social security would be taxable. You got to do that calculation. If you're asking it that way for a down payment, then you kind of, we need a little bit more information, you know, on your social security, whether you're married, whether you're single to tell you how much tax it would be. Right. It's going to be more than you think. That's true. And, and even if we're talking about the down payment, it's going to be more than you think because by pulling money out adds income, which will make your Social Security, which is previously tax-free, will become 50 or 85% of that amount taxable. Right. You, I can't tell you how many times people made this mistake, is that they have a lot of money in a retirement account. They look at the balance. They find their dream home or they're looking at a retirement home, a second home or whatever, and they're taking retirement dollars and buying homes sure. and not have a clue of the tax impact. Or they're paying off a large mor- mortgage. You know, let's say he instead of buying a home, he's got a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage. He's going to pull the three hundred thousand dollars out of the retirement account to pay off the three hundred thousand dollar mortgage. Okay, that's great. You're debt free for how long? <laughs> Not that long, because now next April you're going to owe ninety hundred thousand dollars in tax. And guess what? You're going back to refinance the house that you just paid off to pay the tax. Correct. So that's why I mean we're such big components of tax diversification, understanding the taxation of each of the different accounts. That's why I'm a huge proponent of Roth IRAs, because you take the uncertainty of taxes and stupid mistakes that we all make with our money out of the out the window, right? Take it out of the Roth. Guess what? You're going to blow up your overall retirement, but you're not going to blow it up that bad because there would be no tax. Are you prepared for retirement? Schedule a free financial assessment with an experienced financial professional right online at purefinancial.com.